clans are in turmoil. The inside of the clan is in turmoil. All the clans are in turmoil. We need a little bit of help. Hello, full book questers. It is I, Aaron the Book Quester. Today, I have this awesome epic fantasy book. Well, not fantasy, kind of. Book two in the Warriors Saga, the prophecies begin. Fire and ice, fire and hunter herself, slash himself, because Aaron Hunter's multiple people. And well, let's get right on to it. So, Fireheart has just been recently made a warrior in book one due to his bravery in battle. Meanwhile, Shadow Clan and River Clan are thinking that they want to take over the Wind Clan territory that Wind Clan has been driven out of because they need more prey. But of course, Wind Clan has no intention of allowing that to happen, which means Wind Clan must return. Which means that Blue Star sent Fireheart and his best friend Graystripe in a mission in order to bring Wind Clan back. So Fireheart and Graystripe. Well, they basically journey over into Wind Clan territory, over Wind Clan territory, into the Twalog place, and in an, under an old su thunder path, in a little hole, they find the Wind Clan, and they bring them back through a hard journey, and Wind Clan returns. But River Clan and Shadow Clan aren't exactly happy about that, because River Clan, they're usually the ones with a lot of food, because they have lots of fish. But, but what is going on here? is that two legs, which are humans, have been polluting the nearest rivers, which means that fish can no longer live there, which means that River Clan is currently starving and in the needing of food, which uh, makes the situation much more complicated and much more sympathizable. Meanwhile, while Fireheart is trying to, number one, uncover what Tiger Claw is doing, because he's being really suspicious, and Grystripe, seems to also be super suspicious because he's sneaking out super early even though he's supposed to be in the camp because he's sick. So Fireheart tails him and finds out Graystripe has fallen in love with Silverstream. Which means, well that's bannable because cats between clans, they can't like, they can't mate. Only cats within one clan. So basically, if a thunder clan cat loves it, love, falls in love with, for example, a river clan cat, that is not allowed. You're only allowed to mate within your clan, and that means it's go against against the warrior code. Therefore, Grey Stripe is basically in pretty big trouble, and especially since that the clans usually fight against each other. What will happen if Grey Stripe has to find fight his little girlfriend? I mean, girl cat, whatever. Anyway, so yeah, that's the problem with that, and Graystripe is doing it, and Fireheart is slightly pro frustrated, and also another good experience for them, they have apprentices. Graystripe is training Brackenpaw, while our dear Fireheart is training Cinderpaw. Yes, we know, the legendary Cinder something, you know? Um, and yeah, Cinderpaw is being trained, but Cinderpaw is caught in a little car accident later so that she's crippled and she will never be a warrior. So that's pretty much end of the book. At the end of the book, there's this big climax where the River Clan cats attack Wind Clan and try to drive them out again. Hello? Why have we brought them back if you're gonna drive them out again? So Thunder Clan went in Wind Clan today and drove out River Clan with Wind Clan. Now, yeah, that's pretty much it for the book, but what I thought about it, so Basically, what I wrote down is that, as usual, Aaron Hunter spins a tale that's super realistic, and it's like, huh, I wonder if my cat thinks that, if I ever have a cat, of course. And yeah, and something about that forbidden love does add a nice little touch to the manly world of the warriors fighting and all that. A little bit of that, that factor makes the book a little bit more interesting. And since Greystripe and Fireheart don't exactly follow all the rules, they go against the rules, they do what they think is right, not just follow blindly following the warrior code. Which I think is some very admirable, and I think that that's a good point that we should make, because sometimes the rules might be wrong. Like, who makes the rules? Humans make the rules, and humans might be wrong. So yeah, that's something that we could learn from them. Another thing about their first apprentice I find really interesting, like, they describe the experience like the first time teaching a person to do something, and I feel like that, that, um, 
that pressure that's on you when you have to teach someone younger than you to do something that you're pretty good at. I think that pressure is pretty great and I like how Aaron Hunter describes it and I like how even though this is a world full of warrior cats battling, there is a little bit of realism in it. Like teaching someone is not an easy task. And yeah, um, that's pretty much it for what I thought about this book. And like always, your book, Quester, are in the book, Quester. Thanks for watching. Um, have a great day. Read a book if you can. And goodbye.